The title of my sermon this morning is, We Have a Real Enemy. We have a real enemy. C.S. Lewis says, There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about devils. One is to disbelieve their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive, unhealthy interest in them. I'm going to say that again. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about devils. One is to disbelieve their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive, unhealthy interest in them. Eugene Patterson says it is easier to indulge in ecstasies than engage in obedience. It is easier to pursue a fascination with the supernatural than to enter into the service of God. Kenneth Hagin says extremes and excesses never produce any fruit to the glory of God. We have a real enemy. My job this morning is not to give him preeminence because he's a defeated foe. He's under our feet. Okay? But we gather like this as brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the Most High God as we huddle and we are awake to the fact that we've got a real enemy on the prowl. It's not going to be a hop and a skip and a jump towards us receiving everything that God has for us. It's not going to be a hop and a skip and a jump for us to fulfill our purposes because we have a real enemy, but he is a defeated foe. He's under our feet. He was paraded naked throughout the streets when Jesus hung on the cross more than 2,000 years ago. He was stripped off his sham authority. But the word of God says he roars like a lion and he's intimidating some of you. And today we're going to get our identity in order. We're going to remember who we are. We're going to remember the authority that we have. Because you are able to speak the word of God that says at the sound of the name of Jesus. At the sound of the name of Jesus. At the sound of the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Cancer will bow. Poverty will bow. Depression will bow. Confusion will bow. He's got the name that's above all names. The name that's above all names. And you need to remember that you have that name. You've been given that name. You are found in that name. You are found in that name. Hallelujah. You need to understand your identity. You are sealed. Nothing can snatch you away from him. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are holy. You're not holy because of what you do. You are holy because he has declared it so. That's who you are. You are set apart. You are more than a conqueror and gain surpassing victory through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No evil shall befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling place. That's who you are. What is not revealed to you cannot be restored to you. You need to know who you are. You need to know that you are righteous. You need to know that you are a son and daughter of the Most High God. You need to know that you are blood bought. You are blood washed. You need to know this and you need to declare, you need to declare this. You need to declare this. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say something. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, well balanced, and self disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone he may devour. 
It says he may because he can't. We give him the permission. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, wickedness in high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we are at war. The war is not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle. Because it's not a hop and a skip and a jump towards our purposes, towards what God has for us. I've had people in my home cell, all around me, people who've just declared the name of the Lord, who've just received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. All hell is breaking loose. It's not going to be a hop and a skip and a jump. We need to know who we are. We are at war. But Jesus Christ has already obtained our victory. You need to enforce that victory. Because the thing is, when he intimidates you, he gets you to feel as if you don't have the victory. You need to remind him of his future. You need to serve notice and say, we know exactly where you're going. There's a place specially made for you. But we need to enforce that victory now in our lives. Declare that victory now in our lives. Hallelujah. I'm not scared of the enemy. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He needs to know this because the word of God says, resist him and he'll flee. He knows not to mess with me. He had his best shot. He wanted to take me out years ago. But greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He's given his best shot. I'm a son and daughter of the Most High God. I'm blood washed. I'm blood bought. Don't come mess with me. Take your hands off my family. Take your hands off my finances. Take your hands off my business. Take your hands off my church. Tell him that. He needs to know that you mean business. He needs to know because he doesn't play fair. He plays dirty. The gloves are off. He needs to know who we are. He needs to know what we are made of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you don't know your identity, when he can get you to move off who God says you are, he's won. He has won. John chapter 10 verse 1 to 2 says, I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of the sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. He doesn't come through the legal way. If we look at, we can look at the world as a sheep pen. Jesus came through legally. He came through legally. He came through the birth canal. That's why he's our kinsman redeemer. He becomes our relative so that he can redeem us. Right? The enemy has no legal right here. He has not come legally. That's why he has to possess. He doesn't come legally. That's why Jesus is our kingsman redeemer. Hallelujah. This is what it says of the enemy in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 to 17. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. Instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to its lowest depths. Everyone there will stare at you and ask, can this be the one who shook the earth and made the kingdoms of the world tremble? Is this the one who destroyed the world and made it into a wasteland? I really believe when we, when we see, we, we're going to see some rat. And we're going to be like, was it you? You terrorizing my family. That's what the word of God says. Get 
Dweba means he's a rat. Nkoko means he's just a stray dog. Proverbs 24 verse 5. A wise man is full of strength and a man of knowledge enhances his might. Know the word of God. Know who you are. You're a citizen of heaven. The Bible is your constitution. It's a legal document. You need to enforce the clauses in the new covenant. You are a walking country because you are an ambassador. The government that has deployed you takes care of everything. That's why it says, do not worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink. Is life not more than food or the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. When last did you look at the birds of the air? The Lord Jesus instructs us, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, neither gather into barns. So declares the person, the, 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 the person who has deployed you onto this plane. He says, don't worry. The government that has sent you will provide everything for you. You are a walking country. Wherever Jesus went, the resource of heaven backed him. Wherever Jesus went, the resource of heaven backed him. And we are found in Christ. Amen? We are heirs according to the promise. If any of you is in Christ, the word of God says, Galatians 3.29. If any of you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Proverbs 22.24.10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you, don't, if you have no knowledge, there's no understanding, there's no, no strength. You need to have knowledge. You need to have understanding. Knowledge of the word, understanding the word of God, that gives you the strength to stand. That gives you the strength to stand. Amen. No knowledge means no understanding, means no strength. Amen. Amen. The devil has a plan to slowly but surely snake his way into our lives, attempting to choke the very life out of us. If you think of how a python kills its prey, it doesn't, it doesn't happen in one fell swoop. It coils itself around its prey. And every time the prey lets go of air, it just constricts. It's a progressive, slow process. You don't wake up there. It doesn't happen in one fell soup, soup. So we need to understand the signs from the beginning so we can cut it off right from the beginning. There is a way to defeat him. He was defeated on the cross. You don't have to become his prey. You can learn to recognize early warning signs of this deadly grip. And you can also see where you've left the door open. So you can make changes that bring God's deliverance and restoration. I remember when I was growing up in Pinville, Soweto. I must have been five, six years old. And there was a bully who used to bully me. I was scared to go outside the house. Every time we used to play, he, he was always on me. But there came a day. There came a day where, I don't know, I mustered up strength from where, the courage, I don't know where it came from, but I roared like a lion, and that was the last day. That was the last day. I remember my six-year-old self walking around going, yeah. Now you know. That's exactly what the enemy needs. That's exactly what he needs. Because he's a bully. He's a bully. And he needs to know that you're going to stand up to him. Not by power, not by might, says the Lord, but by his spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, even coming to preach this message, 
It was chaos at my home yesterday. Chaos. I didn't, I, 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 the, the message just couldn't come. I didn't know what I was going to say. Resistance. Resistance upon resistance upon resistance. I don't want to get ahead of myself to, 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 um, to just highlight what's the practical steps. I'll get to it just now. What's the highlight? What's the, what are the practical steps when you feel the resistance, when you feel the pushback, when you feel the bully? There's practical steps that you can walk out. Amen. Because our faith is a practical faith. We've got to walk out our faith. Amen. Because he's a bully. And we need to take the blood of Jesus, right? The blood of Jesus and draw a line and say, you know what? You tried to take me out with drugs. You tried to take me out with every single thing. You tried to take me out. Now, I'm taking the blood of Jesus, right? I'm drawing a line and say, this far and no more. Henceforth in my family, we're not going to have these issues. We're not going to have drug addiction. Henceforth, I'm breaking all generational curses. You come this far and no more. This far and no more. Hallelujah. The blood of the Lamb. And if he can second guess, if he can get you to second guess who you are, like I said, he's one. If he can stop, if he can't stop you from being born again, he has a plan B to make you a miserable Christian. A miserable Christian. Get you to mix between grace and law. You've received grace, right? But now you want to maintain what you receive by grace through the law. Miserable Christian. Because he gets you to focus on what? On you. Anyone who's, not, anyone who's focusing on themselves is not focusing on God. And if he can get you, you're a Christian, but why are you doing that? You're a Christian, but why are you still behaving like that? You're a Christian, but why are you still struggling with that? You're a Christian, why do you still speak like that? And then you get condemned and you, you, remember, you forget Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is now no condemnation. It's the no condemnation, remembering that there is now no condemnation that gives you the power to go and sin no more. Amen. That's what gives you the power to go and sin no more. But if you continually focus on yourself, the enemy, the, the thing is, the enemy does not care. All he cares about is the revelation of Christ in our lives. That's all he cares about. If he can get us as the church to focus on morals and, 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 and outward behavior, he's one. And the thing is, morals in and of themselves are good, right? But how many of us are going to be morally 100% upstanding in the presence of God? None. None of us. If there's any one of you, come see me after the service. We're going to cast that demon out. None. So if he can get us to focus on morals, on behavior, on what you do, on how you walk out this thing, he's one. Once you bring, once you bring Christ into the occasion, that's what he doesn't want. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus in your spaces. Declare the name of Jesus. Stop saying God this and God that. No, 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 no. Which God are you talking about? Which God are you talking about? Because we need to be clear here. There's many gods. There's many, many gods. And once somebody says God, we're like, yo, I can do business with this person. They know God. Which God? Which God? Which God? Speak the name of Jesus. And I've seen how it gets so uncomfortable in spaces when you speak the name of Jesus. And now I do it as a bully to the spiritual realm. It's like, Jesus, speak the name of Jesus. 
Oh, the wonderful name of Jesus. The powerful name of Jesus. I love saying that name. Hallelujah. Speak about Jesus. You'll see they start getting uncomfortable because you are clear who you're speaking about. You are clear who your God is. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I love saying the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why my spirit, even when you're watching movies and they use his name blasphemously, it just rocks me in the spirit. Because the name of Jesus is precious. It's powerful. Hallelujah. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here are signs that you are under attack. Loss of spiritual desire. The goal of any spiritual attack is to cause you to take your eyes off God. It rarely happens deliberately. It doesn't happen overnight. If you feel God is far, guess who has moved? Just like the python takes time to coil itself around prey, so your desire fades, compromise sets in, things, to, things start to cut into your time in the Word. Spiritual attack. Loss of desire for the things of God. You're too busy now. You are now in another income tax bracket. Mm, you're too busy. You are too above to, 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 to bow your knee to the name that's above all names. Mm, you don't have time anymore. Mm, that's spiritual attack. Someone passionate for God finds pleasure in the things of God. Another, another, another sign of loss of spiritual desire is physical fatigue. You're always tired. Hmm? Because the Word of God says His Word quickens our mortal bodies. Are we hearing the Word enough? Because when you hear the Word enough, your mortal, your mortal bodies are quickened. Keep on hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Your mortal body will be quickened. I'm too tired. Do you have to come again? Do you have to say, oh, I'm too tired. And you think he's tired. And then, and then, and then here's the enemy. Yeah, my, my fluorosis, sclerosis is. Then they start talking. Oh, yeah, my family's diabetes type 1. It's, then it's all of those things. All of those things, receiving and accepting the lie of the devil. Receiving it. Hmm? And now it's the end of the year. People are tired. You're tired. And when you're tired, you start making questionable decisions. Hmm? December is around the corner now. You're waiting for December. Tired. That's where you need to be most vigilant. You need to be most vigilant. Most awake. Because it's the end of the year. We can celebrate. It's year end, year end functions. You know that person in HR that I've been watching the whole year. Now, now is the time. Questionable decisions because you are tired. Borderline depression. He has not given us a spirit of depression. He has not given us a spirit of confusion. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And a sound mind. Our greatest challenge comes after a massive victory or just before breakthrough. It's the end of the year. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Another sign that you are under attack, lack attack. There's an attack of lack. Time when everything can go wrong, goes wrong. Business dries up, car breaks down, debtors call all on the same day. This happens so you can take your eyes off God and put your focus on money. And you lose track of who your source is. My source is not my business. 
My source is not my brand. My source is not my wisdom. My source is not my boss. My source is not my degree. My source is not my education. My source is not my wealth. I have but one source. And his name is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his name is Jesus Christ. That's who it is. And his kingdom is self-sustaining, self-propagating. It's a never-ending system of supply. His supply never ends. He's my source. He's got me. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you until the end of time. I shall supply your every need according to my riches in glory. I'll make all grace come to you in abundance that you may always, under all circumstances, no matter what the need, he says, you'll be self-sufficient. Hallelujah. He never comes short. Hallelujah. He doesn't live in poverty. Hallelujah. He's my source. If they take the car, let them take the car. If they want to repossess it, let them repossess it. I'm standing here. I've had cars repossessed. I know exactly what I'm talking about. They come, and for me, it was such a blessing. <laughs> you know, because I remember, once truth is part of your heart, and you declare it, and you're not moved, right? By any wind of doctrine, right? We come into fetch the car. Come fetch the car. <laughs> the next day, okay? I signed a maybe six-year deal with Kia Motors, right? I got three cars. Three. They gave me three cars. Three cars. It was a bus, another two buses, and a little runaround. Hmm? My source. He's my source. Hallelujah. That's why when they want to shortchange you, keep your contract. I know what this is worth. Amen. Keep it. There are, there's people who recognize the worth and they come in because he is my source. Let no man say he made me rich. Let no man, let no man say he made me rich. No man. You will not claim what only God has done in my life. No man will say they made me rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lack attack. You've been attacked. My first question, are you tithing because you're robbing God? You're not robbing God of money. You're robbing God of the opportunity to bless you. Hmm? When you're under lack attack, you worry instead of worshiping. But here's the thing. No human being has ever worried themselves into a better condition. No one has ever sat there and go, hish, hish, and then it became better. You've never worried yourself into prosperity. Ever. When you're under lack attack, you focus on opportunity rather than anointing. <laughs> I'll share a story. You know, since I've been a pastor here, preaching, blah, 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 blah. You know, there's people who call the church and say, uh, and I hope they're listening. <laughs> They'll call the church and then they say, uh, you know, we just feel it in our heart to bless you, Pastor Cabello, and your wife. And obviously, when you see the email, blessing, bring it on. I want to be blessed. Nah? But there's a check in your spirit. You go, okay, hang on a second. I remember speaking to my wife and going, because I want us to, you, you don't, you, remember I said you focus on opportunity rather than anointing. You are under spiritual lack attack. The opportunities come, but you're not focused on the anointing. They'll come to me twice, twice, okay? And then my wife said, you know, I'd rather speak to a leader in the church to be the, a, a, a touch point of the person who wants to bless you, 
right? Because tomorrow, the Kansei Kabel was taking money from the congregations. There, there was a witness. I said, thank you very much that you want to bless me. Please speak to Pastor Ellen Plant. This is his number. Did they phone Ellen Plant? <laughs> they did not phone Ellen Plant. They did not phone Ellen Plant. I'll tell you a story about another one. And, and then, they, you know what? They always come. Uh, they always come with, oh, you are a man of God. Uh, uh, Pastor Cabello, you know, we really just sense that you are the, the right ambassador for our company. What we have on offer, we want to give you a brand new car. We want to give you three million rands. I'm not lying. It's in my emails. I can show you. We are going to give you three million rands. And then uh, uh, there's one or two things we want to shoot with you. Send us the contract. We want to pay the money now. That time. <laughs> that time you're going three million. <laughs> three million. I'm not lying. I found Rufilo, one of the guys that I work with who, who manages uh, 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 me. I said, please speak to these people. He did due diligence, right? What's the company's name? What are you selling? And I hope they're in the building. <laughs> I hope you are here. Ne? Eh, 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 eh. What, what, what? He did due diligence. They couldn't answer the questions. They couldn't answer the question. The, the, the business prospectus was, here's what people do. They fall on money. And then they look for you to legitimize what they do. To legitimize what they do. Some of them money launder. Right? Because once the money hits your account, then they say, Isa, we gave you five million. We wanted to give you 500,000. Please give us back four and a half. The money is clean. When the Zondo Commission comes, you are there. you there. The money went through your account. You can't say, oh, I'm a pastor. People want, no, 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 no. Worse that you are even Kabelo Mabala. And it's like, ah, oh, we don't want to know. We don't want to know. We don't want to know. You, you, the money hit your account. <laughs> Wake up, church. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. What did Jesus say? Be humble as a dove, but be wise as serpents. That shows me Jesus was, was here. You think Jesus, holy, holy Lamb of God, he was here. He can see. Streetwise. Not every offer is from God. Not every offer is from God. The enemy said to Jesus, all these things I will give you if you worship me. But they're his anyway. What are you talking about? <laughs> they're Jesus' anyway. We are heirs of the world. We have everything through Christ. So when you offer me everything and I've got everything, who's confused? I have everything. Let no man say he made me rich. Never. Spiritual attack, lack attack. You have a weak prayer life. That's when you know you're under spiritual attack. Feeling overwhelmed and hopeless. Because overwhelmed and hopeless means you are focusing too much on the problem. You're just staring at the problem. It will overwhelm you. It will make you feel hopeless. And that's the enemy's job. Keep focusing on the problem. Because what happens when you focus on the problem? Because here's what you need to understand about corruption. People are trying to fend for themselves. They are their own providers. When you're your own provider, you will make questionable deals because you are seeing to yourself. You do, you're not believing that there is a source that will supply all your needs, so you fend for yourself. That's what it's about. It's about people feeling, you know what? No one is going to do this for me. I'm going to get it myself. You start making questionable decisions. You know you're under attack when old habits and lifestyles resurface. 
you start to have euphoric recall. When I was in rehab, they told us, play the whole movie through. Don't just play the nice parts. Play the whole movie through pertaining to your old lifestyle habits. Play the times when you were arrested. Play the times when you lost, nearly lost everything. Play the times when you lost self-respect for yourself. Play the nice, play the whole movie. And lastly, you know you're under attack when you pull away from godly relationships. The people in your life, you know exactly what they're going to say. But you pull away from those people. Now, five do nots. Okay? I want you to write this down. Five do nots to break the enemy attack. Do not forget who made you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're a son and daughter of the Most High God. You are valuable and precious. precious. You're a priest. You're a king. You're a holy nation. Amen. Do not forsake time of prayer. Do not forsake your place of power. The prodigal son is safe in the house. It's safe in the house. It's safe in the house, church. It is safe in the house. When God starts using you and starts expanding you and, 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 and you are impacting the world, don't get too clever for the house. Come sit in the house. Come sit in the house. Because God does a work in, 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 in us, right? He works and he works and he works. Fruit starts to become part of our lives. And then we forget. We forget that it emanated from the house. Stay in the house. Stay in the house. It's not about you. Amen. Do not forsake the power of partnership. Iron sharpens iron. One will put a thousand to flight. Two will put ten thousand to flight. And do not disconnect from pastoral protection. There's people with a pastoral calling over your lives who are speaking into your lives. Let them speak into your lives. Amen. This, this whole institution, this, this <laughs> as the church, I'm talking about just the church. The church as an institution was put in place by the Lord for your own good. Amen. For your own good. To not take advantage of it is foolishness. It's foolishness. Everything that I am is because of this local church. Right here. Men and women of God speaking over my life. Serving in this house. It's because of here. Now when I become a billionaire, when? <laughs> now, Gabelo's not coming to church anymore. I mean, how many stories have we seen like that? It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. People start getting full of themselves and forget where they come from. Amen. Remember I spoke about um, the practical steps of, that you need to take, especially when you come into resistance. It's all about atmos the atmosphere because your atmosphere determines the climate. The climate uh, determines the stronghold. And the stronghold determines the culture. So your atmosphere. They, they, you need to be hearing the word in your atmosphere. Sunday can't be the only time you're hearing the word. The word, the word says, my son and my daughter, pay attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Do not let it depart from your eyes. It is life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. That is the atmosphere you continually need to be in. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Do not conform yourself to the patterns of this world by the renewing of your mind. The renewing means it's continuous. It's every single day. It's every single day. It's not only on Sunday or home cell on Wednesday. It's every single day you are hearing the word. 
Hearing the word is not a religious activity. You are receiving life. Life. The atmosphere needs to be praise, word, worship, declaring the name of Jesus. Some of you, the next time you're going to hear the name of Jesus is next week Sunday. Atmosphere determines climate. The climate that emanates from the atmosphere of word is the presence of the Spirit, the sensitivity to the Spirit. We are led by the Spirit, and when we led by the Spirit, we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So your atmosphere, it always has to be praise, always is to be word. The word needs to be spoken in your atmosphere because it determines the climate, and the climate is the presence of the Spirit, the presence of God. There's a sensitivity towards the voice of God. And the stronghold now that starts to take hold in your life, Determined by your atmosphere, your climate. The stronghold that starts to take hold is hearing the shepherd's voice. You are able to hear the shepherd's voice because you've cultivated it. You kept on hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. My sheep know my voice. What did the Lord say on the Mount of Transfiguration when Moses was standing there and Elijah and Jesus amidst? What did the Lord say? This is my son. Listen to him. Listen to him. Hallelujah. Atmosphere determines climate. Climate determines stronghold. The stronghold determines the culture. You start to walk in your destiny. You hearing the word. You become sensitive to the spirit. You are led by the spirit. Right? You are led by the spirit. The stronghold becomes hearing the shepherd's voice. And the culture becomes Walking in your destiny. Amen. That's how we wage war. That's how we wage war. You continually hear and hear and hear and hear and hear. And it's never enough. You can never say I've heard enough. You can never say you've heard enough. Amen. Please stand to your feet at this time. As I said, I'm not giving the enemy preeminence. He's a defeated foe. 1 John 5 verse 4 says, Those who are born of God overcome the world. Romans 6 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. We are under grace, we are not under law. And when you are under law, when you are under grace, sin will have no dominion over you. The enemy will have no dominion over you. As I said earlier on, if he can get you to focus on you and what you do, he's won the battle. But the Word of God says, when you are under grace, the enemy will have no dominion over you. Unearned, unmerited, undeserved. Amen. Romans 5, 17, For if by the trespass of one man death reigned. How much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life? Do you want to reign in life? Do you want to reign in life? Receive. Continue receiving the abundance of grace. And receive and remind yourself of the gift of righteousness that you have. Because all the devil needs to do is remove you from receiving the supply of grace. And you remembering that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If he can get you to move off that position, he's won. And the good fight of faith is getting back to that place. Receiving and receiving. Taking and taking and taking the grace of God. Continuing to take the grace of God. And remembering that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The word says you must be born again. You must be born again. Otherwise, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. The only way you you, you can wage war, enforce the defeat, remind the enemy of the defeat, is to be born of God. You must be born again. 
Otherwise, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. If you're in this place and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today's your day. You are not here by mistake. You are here because of a divine appointment. God has got your number. You are here. He's led you here. Because heaven is a free gift. No one deserves heaven. It's a free gift. You can't earn heaven. Because man is a sinner and needs a savior. You cannot save yourself. I can't save you, but I can lead you to the savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. The good news of the gospel is God is a God of mercy. He doesn't want to punish you. But he's a God of justice. He must deal with sin. And how he dealt with sin, he sent his son Jesus Christ to pay the price for all our sins. Sins in the past, sins in the present, sins in the future. And all you have to do today is receive. And say, Lord, I can't save myself. I can't save myself. Eternal separation from God is a real thing. I remember when Pastor Ray spoke about his testimony. He said the only thing that mattered in heaven was whether you knew Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's not to scare anyone. That's the truth. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, today's your day. I want to speak to another group of people. You've walked with the Lord. You've tasted the, 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 the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But you know that you know you're living in a spiritual pigsty. Come out of that situation. If you fall into any of those two categories, please give me the privilege and honor of praying with and for you. And if you want my prayer for you, say, Kabelo, I need Jesus. Just slip your hand up wherever you are. Slip your hand up. Just slip your hand up. I need Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Just slip your hand up wherever you are. I need Jesus. I'm coming home today. I'm coming home. Heaven is my portion. Heaven is my portion. Heaven on earth is my portion. I'm going to ask one more time as I look around. Thank you. Just slip your hand up. I need Jesus. Now if you put your hand up, or you are supposed to put your hand up, I want you to do something really brave. Bring your personal belongings and come stand with me here in the front. Come. Come. Come on, church, encourage them. They're coming. Hallelujah. Come. Keep clapping, church. Encourage them. They're coming. Come. Come. Hallelujah. They're coming, church. Keep clapping. Come. Keep clapping, church. Come on. This is a miracle happening in front of us. Come. They're coming, church. Keep clapping. Come on. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're coming, church. Keep clapping. Hallelujah. 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 Come. Keep coming. Come. Hallelujah. Now, you're not standing in a place of shame. You're not standing in a place where we are now commanding you to go out there and be perfect. What we're pleading with you to do this morning is to remember that you have a perfect Savior who paid the price for you. You are standing on righteous ground right now. You are now a son and daughter of the Most High God. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You're not praying to me. You're praying to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
and his name is Jesus Christ. I want you to say this with everything that you've got. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the free gift of heaven. I know that I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Thank you that you're a God of mercy. I know you don't want to punish me, but you're a God of justice. You must deal with sin. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who paid the price for all my sins. I receive this free gift of salvation by having saving faith in you alone. Jesus, you are now my Lord, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name, amen. Give them a round of applause.